Hello, and welcome to Love Maps, where we discuss different aspects of all things romance and help create a roadmap for fruitful relationships and personal success. On this episode, we're going to learn about one of the leading causes of stress in a relationship. Money. That's right. Unfortunately, money, if not discussed properly, can cause friction between couples, ultimately leading to divorce. On the show, I speak with some top financial experts and learn why it is difficult for couples to talk about money and how starting the conversation can lead to better understanding and openness. Let's check it out and learn what they have to say about the almighty dollar. This is Love Maps. Martin and Chelsea Matthews are licensed financial professionals with a combined 15 years of experience. They believe that if you don't have the right beliefs or habits, that financial planning won't do any good. They literally wrote the book on couples and money called Let's Fight About Money. They joined us in the AIB studio to explain how to figure out a person's money personality and to look at why and how those traits can lead to battles over the budget. So Chelsea, Martin Matthews, thanks for being on Love Maps today. Mm -hmm. And you two are a couple, and you're also co-authors of the book, Let's Fight About Money. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about, um, just for the people at home, um, you guys are a couple, what do you do? Well, Chelsea and I, were financial professionals, we're licensed financial professionals. We're combined half over 15 years of experience uh, helping people with their, with their money. The thing that makes what we do very different is as a couple, we bring that dynamics to when we sit down with other couples and help them deal with their financial issues. And we've done a lot of work in areas of personal development. So we would sit down with a couple to talk about their finances, their investments, budgeting. But there's a deeper aspect to money and finances, meaning how do you think about money? How do you treat money? What is your money personality? How does that affect your relationship? And we, we started working together to combine those two things and really teach people those deeper levels of their finances to really help them really take control of it. So that's kind of a little bit of the background of Chelsea and I uh, in this area. So what's the most common thing you see? Now I hear, you know, the number one thing that leads to divorce is financial issues. Mm -hmm. So do you have couples coming to you in crisis? Uh, how, how, what, what do you guys deal with? <laughs> Well, I think that, first of all, people don't understand what their own beliefs and habits are around mm -hmm. money. And so then when you put a relationship together, there's two different people with two different beliefs and habits around money, and then that's where conflict happens. So we help people first understand, like, what are their beliefs and their habits around money? Where did those come from based on how they grew up, what they saw, what they experienced? And then once they have an understanding of their own beliefs around money, then they can start to understand their partners, mm -hmm. and then we give them tools to communicate and then once they're able to communicate about money then we can actually talk about okay now what do we actually do with your money so the communication part is key do you think people are like unaware of the importance of finances maybe they're not taught it in school or um, mm -hmm. they're taught it a certain way at home how do you think that works well it's not taught in schools the just some basic statistics are two out of three people are financially illiterate so if something isn't taught in school and your parents didn't learn and didn't really teach them, where are they gonna learn? So most people learn through what we call experience. They make some financial mistakes, and then they learn, okay, that's, that's, I shouldn't have done that. And, but we really want it to be different. We don't want people to make as many mistakes, but it happens and starts through education. So if people are properly educated about how money works, they'll make better and smarter financial decisions. So you guys are a married couple. Uh, mm -hmm. The book's called Let's Fight About Money. Uh, do you, did you guys fight about money? <laughs> well, I mean, everyone has conflicts around yeah. money, and the whole point, it's, it's kind of a play on words, let's fight on money, uh, let's fight about money, because um, for one, if people are fighting, they're at least talking about it. I think the most dangerous thing is when people don't mm -hmm. talk about it at all. So if you're fighting about it, you're at least talking about it, and we want to help people go from fighting each other to fighting for each other and mm -hmm. fighting for money. And so... Um, we wanted to bring our message of combining personal and financial development together to as many people as possible. So we started doing a live show 
and we started getting a lot of similar questions and it was about our relationship mm -hmm. and people were asking do you really get along that well do you guys really talk about that money that much do you really spend that much time together and so we realized we had figured some things out that people were like desperate to find out mm -hmm. and to learn about and so we got the idea to write the book and we tell a lot of our own personal experiences mm -hmm. of how we kind of navigated through our own conflicts having to do with money and we talk about some kind of embarrassing and silly money fights that people can really relate to, I think. And so we came up with some tools and tips to be able to navigate through that communication and really be able to work together. Now, how do couples, like you mentioned earlier, how do they get on the same page? Like, I'm really interested in this, This, I, mean, I don't want to call it an epidemic, but it's like people, it's this financial issue is leading to divorce. Um, yeah. What is it? specifically like just people are hiding their accounts or one person spending too much like what, what, what do you run into well the biggest thing is there are different money personalities and here's what I mean different people treat money differently to give you an example I have the money personality of a spender which means when I get money I tend to want to spend it, it makes me feel good to spend it Chelsea has the money personality of a saver she wants when money comes in she wants to save it hold on to it now that conflict will happen because we all have a finite amount of money only there's a certain amount of money that we get so one person wants to spend one person wants to save conflict so the biggest issues we see are money personalities biggest problem that you can find is two spenders now two spenders one wants to spend another person wants to spend they run out of money then they don't have money for their necessities and other things but the conflict really comes up when you have those different money personalities now what you have to do is understand why does Chelsea need financial security where does that why does her money per, why is her money personality so important how can I pay more attention to my money personality and not spend 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 so that I can pay attention to her need for save 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 so the, the understanding those different money personalities is extremely important to resolving conflicts and relationships that's where a lot of it comes from so how do you learn to, to mend that bridge and make that compromise and more importantly how should couples be what should they be saving for? How should they save? Go ahead. Well, you know, there's, um, we teach people a process called the six building blocks to unbreakable financial house. When you're, in a, when you're a family, you're a relationship, or you're married, it's not about you, the individual, anymore. It's about your family. So I think families, the biggest thing they want is financial security first, and then financial freedom. They want to know that if anything happens, they'll be okay. So I think one of the biggest things that couples should save for is, one, an emergency fund. If an emergency happens, you want to make sure that's there. Uh, the other thing I think is you should try to save and invest for is financial freedom. To be able to do things as a family, uh, to be able to give more, we believe in, you know, earning all you can, saving all you can, and giving all you can. There's a lot of uh, charitable works that Chelsea and I like to support. In order for us to do that as a family, we have to be financially secure and then financially free. So I think if people save towards those things, things that in which they can use their money for, things they can, uh, causes they believe in, those kinds of things I believe are a great purpose for why people should save and invest money. And you'd probably be able to speak to, speak to this, but um how is our society changing? I mean, we spoke with a uh, uh, financial advisor, and it seems like women are more um, dominant in the workforce. And in some situations, women are even making more than the man. So that old idea of the man being the head of the house and having the finances in order is drastically changing. Um, do you run into any issues with that? And um, can you maybe speak to some of the experiences you've had? Sure, yeah. I mean, it used to be that typically the man was the breadwinner, the woman was the caretaker, and now we see a variety of dis different situations. So sometimes the woman is the one, uh, the bread uh, breadwinner. Sometimes the man is staying at home with the kids. Sometimes they're both working. So it really depends on each person's, each family's situation. And I think that it really all comes down to understanding, first of all, where each partner's coming from, what they expect. And then when we talk about getting on the same page, it's not always a matter of seeing things the same way. Like we talked about money personalities and we see things differently based on our, our habits and our behaviors and our experiences. Mm -hmm. So I think first of all, it comes down to understanding where we are and then what we want and then setting up a plan so that it's really a win-win. So I think that some of where the conflicts come up is that we're trying to get each other to agree 
in our same way of thinking. Mm -hmm. So first of all, understanding those differences and then finding out what each person's goal is and what they want because if the husband wants the wife to stay at home but the wife wants to be out working, well there's a conflict right there. Mm -hmm. So it's about understanding what each other wants and having that ultimate goal together as a family, as a partner, as finances, and then you can kind of get on the same page with your differences complementing each other. So it seems communication is key. How, how mm -hmm. do couples really learn to communicate effectively? Well, I'll tell you a story where that affects Chelsea and I. Um, so there's a way that um, I grew up thinking if, if my partner likes something, I make a mental note about it. So if Chelsea wants me to take out the garbage and I forget to take the garbage out, some people might say, go to their partner and say, well, you never take the garbage out, you always forget to take the garbage out. Well, that doesn't incentivize me to want to do it. So one of the things we cre created to teach couples how to communicate effectively is to say something along the lines of, I like it when you do this. So when it comes to our money, different money personalities, I'm a spender, Chelsea's a saver, she'll say, I like it when you discuss with me before you make a major purchase. So anytime my partner says, my wife, or if you're in a relationship, you're, you, whatever, whoever your partner is, says, I like it when you do this, I think people tend to make a mental note because I think we, we really want to please our partner. We want to make sure they're happy. We want to do things that they like. So when Chelsea says, I like it when you take out the garbage every Monday night, you know, I make mental notes. This is what Chelsea likes. This is what I should do. And same thing with our money and our finances. I like it when you do this. And it's more receptive than you never do this because that's critical. People don't want to be criticized because they're not likely to do the thing. So if you say, I like it when versus you always do this or you never do this or you always do that or never do that, um, that makes it more receptive. You want to communicate in a way the other person is going to be receptive to and that really makes a big difference. It's like a mental affirmation that lets you know you care about them and mm -hmm. you love them. So, so kind of winding down, um, the book, is there anything you wanted to mention about it? Is there anything in there? You said it's a lot about like the personal stories that you guys have gone through to kind of help other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talk about um, some of our own personal examples. And then one thing that we also talk about, we mentioned before that you know, financial education is not in schools. And typically, if our parents don't have a, a good understanding of how money works, then we don't learn it from them either. And so um, it's so important for us to learn for ourselves, but also if we have kids, we're setting an example for them. And so it's so important to be instilling them these good money habits. So we talk about things um, in front of kids too, like never fight about money, um, mm -hmm. never talk about um, scarcity or that we can't afford things. So there's certain things specifically that will contribute to building our kids' beliefs um, and habits around money as well. So there's a whole chapter on teaching kids good money habits, and this is something that we're very passionate about. Our 12-year-old mm -hmm. son, we've been working with him since he was six years old on good money habits, and now he actually teaches kids good money oh. habits. He has mm -hmm. his own business. So it's really about <clears throat> passing it on to the next generation as well. Great. Yeah, And, um, you know, it's it moves beyond just not having a conflict about money, you also have to know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So when you're a family, you're building an unbreakable financial house, which is what we teach people should be the goal. When you have a strong financial house, you can do more, you can give more. And and so we, or, we organize it all into a very simple process. We call this the six building blocks. So there's uh, your cash flow, debt management, having an emergency fund, having proper protection for all your assets, and building wealth. And, in, and after you've done a great job in all those things, how do you preserve what you've built and pass on your legacy to the next generation, making sure that they're able to handle what you might pass on to them and do good things with it. So all of that is, is in there that we discussed that. It's not just about the conflicts you might have, how to resolve them, but then it takes it further into what do you do? Because I think that's where a lot of people get stuck. They don't know how to navigate the conflict and they don't know what to do once they get through the conflict. So we really want to help them understand what to do and how to, how to deal with these conflicts they have. Great. Well, Chelsea, Martin, thank you so much for being on the show today. Is there, real quick, is there any like a website or anything people want to get in touch with you? Yes, we're actually giving our book away for free. Uh, you can get a physical copy of the book. You just cover shipping anywhere in the world. We'll, we'll send, buy a copy for everybody and send it out to them. Go to letsfightaboutmoney.com forward slash book. 
and I will send everybody a free copy of our book. Oh, okay, very charitable of you. Thanks. Thanks for being here. Thank Thanks, you Will. so much for having us. Yep.